she just stops and she's writing on her notepad and she looks up and she said, you know what, Megan, Casey's not here on this couch, but you are. And I can show you how to be the healthiest version of yourself, if you trust me. Because if you want to make a better marriage, make a better you. And I think that that whole concept that two people in a marriage need to be there working on their marriage it is great. And I want that. And of course, that's ideal for any couple. But the reality we all need to face helping couples is that oftentimes it starts with one person. And in our marriage, it just happened to be me. On today's episode, we talk with a couple who had quite the journey. Casey and Megan Caston were the couple least likely to succeed in their marriage. After meeting in college, they fell in love fast and then said, I do. But after only three years, they were headed straight for divorce. Their relationship had fallen apart. Communication was lost. Sex was non-existent. Their finances crumbled in the midst of the chaos. And the worst part? They placed blame on each other for their bad marriage. But one thing they did agree on, they both didn't want to become another American divorce statistic. The Castens began searching for ways to do marriage right. They surrounded themselves with healthy couples, experts, books, and got therapy to make a relational transformation. But they admit that it was a long and really difficult process to find resources that were affordable and convenient. So they decided to do something about it and founded Marriage 365. So be sure to visit marriage365.com to learn more about their membership program and newly released marriage app. We hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to Stronger Marriage Connection. I'm psychologist Liz Hale, along with the esteemed Professor David Schramm. We are dedicating our life's work to bringing you the best we have in valid marital research, along with a few tips and tools to help you create the marriage of your dreams. Good morning, Dave. Hey, Liz. It's so great to be with you. It's so great to be with you. I'm super excited to share with you and our listeners and viewers this great couple, Casey and Megan Caston. I have followed them for a long time. They are co-founders of Marriage 365. They are one of the most, Dave, transparent couples you're ever going to want to meet. They fell in love in college. They got married, had the good life, except three years later, they were headed for divorce court. And everything was falling apart, right? From their finances to their communication to their lovemaking. The one thing that they had in common, however, is they didn't want to be another divorce statistic. And they got busy and down and dirty. So I'm really happy that we can share with everyone, Megan and Casey Caston. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Liz. Thank you for having us. We're so excited to be here. Yeah, we are so excited to have you guys on here. And thanks for your transparency, your vulnerability. And by the way, for turning your, your marriage around, I think that brings a lot of, of hope. So Marriage 365 was born out of your own realization that none of us know how to do this thing called marriage right out of the gate, right? And so you wanted to make it not only accessible, but affordable to couples, which is just so awesome. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So basically when our marriage was falling apart, um, you know, we, we got married young. We didn't have money. We had a lot of student loan debt um, and we were looking for resources. And basically the only option was therapy. Well, what do you do if you can't afford therapy? And we're very pro therapy at Marriage 365. If you can afford it, it's the best thing that you can possibly do for yourself. But the reality is, is we went into debt as we were rebuilding and repairing our marriage. And as we healed, we thought, gosh, like what do couples do if either one, they're not in an area with great marriage and family therapists? What if they're not involved at a church that offers some kind of marriage counseling or marriage programs? You know, what, what do couples do? And you just feel so stuck anyways. And, you know, this was this was the time when everything was starting to go online. That kind of dates how old we are, you know. And I remember going, what if we had an online resource where it was practical? It was affordable. It was accessible for anybody, not just the United States, but in other countries, because if a marriage is hurting, no matter where you live, you should be able to invest in it if that's what you desire to do. And I think a lot of guys are afraid to go to a therapist's office. I mean, first of all, it's intimidating. Um, It's very scary to open up and be vulnerable with someone that's sitting across the way. I mean, a lot of guys are just thinking they're I'm getting judged, you know, for something as natural as just being in a relationship with somebody 
Like, shouldn't it come natural? And if I'm failing at it, what does that say about me? So there's a lot of shame. So, you know, nobody wants to raise their hand and say, hey, um, I'm struggling in the sex department. I mean, they're not going to do that with their friends. They don't want to do it with a therapist. So what if there was a safe place anonymously? You can ask all the embarrassing questions you never wanted to bring up, but you actually had a tool and resource. And that was what we needed when we were struggling. And so when we look in the camera and film one of those webcasts, we are looking at a younger version of ourselves and saying, if we had a time machine to enter into our living room in those first years of marriage, what would we want to have heard, right? Because there's my mom's married six times. I had no clue what a healthy relationship looked like. I had no clue. I had no zero communication skills. I didn't know how to handle emotions, let alone Megan's. So, I mean, I was a hot mess. Yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I was, <laughs> and you had several marriages on your side as well, Megan, and divorces. Yeah. So our between both sets of our yeah. So between both sets of our parents, there's been 12 marriages. Oof. That's a yeah. lot, and I think yeah. people feel really um, overwhelmed when they hear that number. Try living it. So there was just a lot of divorce, a lot of infidelity, um, just a lot of brokenness, really. And and like Casey said, I love that, babe. What what how you're like? I never knew what to do. We were not equipped getting married. We believed that love was enough, which I'm sure mm -hmm. you two have heard the stories. And then what happens when you don't feel the love? What happens when those feelings kind of go and you're like, is this all there is? Yeah. So, you know, I just have to point out, statistically speaking, from the research, there's no way that you two should should be together. And yet I think that there's a, some listeners who can relate to that, who have parents or grandparents and people who have been through marriage and divorce, marriage, and divorce. And they're like, OK, you know, the odds are stacked against us. How how do we make this work? And I, so I think that your story resonates and they can relate and say, ah, there, there's hope. I, uh, I know someone who's been through this and more and still can make it work. Dave, we were rambling off at a retreat, all the things that we struggled with. So mm -hmm. parents with infidelity, the, you know, mental illness, even um, blended family. Okay, wait, uh, we live in Orange County. Yeah. In uh. California, the divorce rate is one of the highest in the nation. It's 72%. Yeah. Yep. Hi. We, we yes. dealt with infertility. We buried ourselves $200,000 mm -hmm. worth of debt. So this statistician came up to us and he said, hey, listen, I just added all these things up as factors on your, your marital <laughs> success level. He came back and says, I have 1.9% chance of you surviving. And Dave, that's why people call us the couple that's least likely to succeed in marriage. Yeah, marriage but, survivors. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And not to mention, we're both very stubborn people. <laughs> like our personalities, we're, we're, we're both leaders. Yeah. We're both extroverts. Very competitive. We're very competitive people. I have and ADHD. Then, yes, he has ADHD. And then on top of it, our son, who we love dearly, but he has autism. So even wow. special a needs. special needs child, yeah. you know, yeah. it raises the chance yep. of you having not only just marital strife, but even divorce. So we really did have all the odds stacked against us. We are fighters though. We're like, wow. we're going to beat this and we are beating it. Yep. Incredible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. I love that determination. Do you, where did you get that determination? Do you think what made you look at each other saying enough, we're not going to go down that road. Like our family did. We're going to do something different. Is it just that fight that you had? No, actually. Um, so it actually started with me. Um, I had begged Casey to go to therapy with me. He said, no, I tried every unhealthy tactic in the book. I did the nagging, the uncontrollable crying, the, um, the manipulation. I withheld sex. I slammed doors. I gave the silent treatment to get his attention because all I wanted was for him to fight for me and to fight for our marriage. And he kept saying, I'm not the problem. You're the problem, Megan. And so I went to my girlfriend and I said, you know, I, I can't believe this. Like, I can't believe I'm, I'm going to do this, but I, I, I'm done. And she says, before you make that decision, because Megan, that is a massive decision that you're going to make in your life. You need to go see, see a therapist on your own. Best advice she gave me. And I did. And I'm on the couch. And I just remember feeling so hopeless. Mm -hmm. 
it was one of the worst moments of my life. I remember I had lost like 20 pounds. I couldn't eat. I was just, I couldn't believe that I got to this point. And I'm sitting here telling her all the things about our marriage and how bad of a husband Casey is. And she just stops and she's writing on her notepad and she looks up and she said, you know what, Megan, Casey's not here on this couch, but you are. And I can show you how to be the healthiest version of yourself if you trust me. Because if you want to make a better marriage, make a better you. And I think that that whole concept that two people in a marriage need to be there working on their marriage it is great. And I want that. And of course, that's ideal for any couple. But the reality we all need to face helping couples is that oftentimes it starts with one person. And in our marriage, it just happened to be me. And so for 13 long months, I stopped worrying about what he was going to do, what he wasn't doing. I stopped blaming him. And I really just put the focus on me. I was unhealthy. I had issues. I needed to work on me. And I started to change. And then there's freedom in that, right? You're, you're so, you become more confident. I became more self-aware. I started knowing, oh, those are, that's why he's triggered. Oh, that's why that bothers him. Oh, this is why we fight about this. And then I learned how to communicate. I learned how to set boundaries. No matter what was going to happen in my marriage, I was not going to settle for just being an average wife. I was going to be the healthiest person I could be. And I thought we were doomed. I, I literally thought we were doomed because... I saw a change in Megan. And like I said, I had no idea how to navigate relationships because of, of my, my childhood trauma and abandonment wounds and everything else like that. And, you know, um, I saw her transform before my eyes into this healthy person, into a healthy wife. And, and I remember this one time I came at her with so much energy. She had just pissed me off and, now I'm walking up to her. She sees me coming and, and she's like, hey, 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 I can tell that you're upset. I really want to hear what you have to say. I'm going to step outside and I'm going to let you take a, a moment to yourself. And when we come back, let's talk in a healthy way. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I was stunned. <laughs> wow. Like my sparring partner's gone, you? right? I'm like, who, who is this person? And I, all of a sudden, it just started to dawn on me, like, it was very obvious who was the toxic, unhealthy spouse. And it was me. And I looked at Megan. I saw the confidence in her. I was like, damn, it's sexy. I want that. <laughs> right. I saw um, this, the setting of healthy boundaries. I saw this person come alive and I really wanted to be just like her because Megan had, like she said, she stopped settling for herself. She set a higher bar. And I realized I wanted that. And, you know, it took a long time for us to heal our marriage. It didn't happen overnight. I know. We always tell couples, it does not happen overnight. There are no quick fixes in marriage, right? Yeah. But those years of repairing were hard and emotional, but beautiful. And so I think the fighters in us came at that moment. Yeah. Like it was like, we're not, wait, we, there's a better way to do marriage. Like we're going to do this the That's, right way. Yeah. We lived with our parents' divorce decisions and we're like, that's not what we want. No. Dave, you know what I got to tell you, Megan, the most amazing part of that story to me is who you happen to choose for a therapist. You realize, right, that that could have gone so differently. Mm. Had you sat on that couch, complained about Casey, she could have bought into it, right? A therapist, as well-meaning as we are, could have bought in and say, you know what, you probably should just get out. How did you choose so well? Did you know that you were choosing well? I did not know I was choosing well. No, she had, she was a recommendation from someone that I knew. Um, but I think we tell couples when we're helping them and we're recommending therapy, you know, you really want to get someone who's going to be able to point out the good and the bad mm -hmm. and not just hear you and validate you. Now, there's there's times when you need to go to therapy and say, listen, I just need a safe place right now. That's all I need, you know. But I, I do really like when you're stuck in a situation in your in your life or in your marriage, for, for them to use even kind of some marriage coaching tactics to say, here's what you need to do, or here's the goal that you want to move towards. I'm going to help you get there. Um, because it, again, the end result is what we're looking for, right? She wanted me off her couch. She wanted me to succeed in life. She wanted the best for me, no matter what was going to happen in my marriage. Well, she was giving you practical tools that you could apply in your life and not just reflective questions. 
Because, you know, if I was sitting in that therapist's office, again, my compass was so far, you know, away from north on what a healthy relationship looked like. If somebody said, so what do you think you should do? I'm like, oh, I don't know. That's why I'm here. I'm yeah. on your couch yeah. because I don't know. I have no doing. clue. Point me in the right direction, please. <laughs> we'll be right back after this brief message. And we're back. Well, let's dive right in. That's your job. Yeah. Well, I commend you and I commend that therapist. I have so many favorite things on Marriage 365 that I've turned to. One of them, I'll have to be honest with you, I have used quite a bit. I've borrowed from you. I don't always give you credit, so I'm sorry, but it's the WAIT. W-A-I-T, the acronym. Yes. Why am I talking? Because words really get in the way for one, right? And we use the wrong words for another. Tell us more about how you came up with weight. Yeah, so that actually was something that I've learned through therapy and also being married to someone who has ADHD and also myself being someone who yep. is in, in one of my top strengths is communication. The problem is, is if I'm not in a healthy state, my communication and my words can cut really, really sharp. And so I would say things in the name That's of right, honesty, quote unquote, but it was brutal honesty. And so weight is about thinking before you speak. We teach our children this, and then somehow we stop teaching right. that to adults. Um, you know, just, just give yourself a minute and really evaluate. And again, it's really about if you want to make a better marriage, make a better you. So you stop and you, I have a worksheet at Marriage 365 where it's a series of questions. And it's really processing, what do I want from this conversation with my spouse? What is the outcome I'm looking for? Am I in a healthy place? Am I wanting an apology? Am I wanting validation? Am I wanting just a safe place to vent? All of those are example questions that you would ask yourself. And man, when you do it and practice it, the communication is so much more clear and defined because we believe at Marriage 365, it is your responsibility to give your spouse the heads up of what you want the conversation to be. They are not a mind reader. Mm -hmm. We want them to be mind readers. Wait, Casey, are you a mind no. reader? No, I know I'm not a mind reader. Mm -hmm. We sure would love it if we could read each other's minds, but that's yep. just not real life. And yep, I love, mm -hmm. I love that you love that yeah. because it's it's a tool that I think not even just in marriage. I think everybody that communicates to someone um, can can definitely benefit from. That's right. Hmm. I love that. Hey, one of your popular videos on Marriage 365 is the the date night, and you have you talk about the the questions that you can ask each other. Give us a sample of some of those questions that you, that you talk about on that video. Well, one of the ways that we build emotional intimacy is through open-ended questions. And I think that that comes so easy when we feel the love, when we're dating, when we're excited about the novelty of getting to know someone. And, and that's, that's easy. But then we get married <laughs> and things get mundane. And we're, we're processing through life. We're at raising children. We are going to work Monday through Friday. Like the mundane can kind of start to put the chill on that once, you know, fiery hot love. And then what happens is you get to date nights. And if you have not been building and been intentional with your relationship, date nights turn into, you know, talking about the kids, talking about schedules, talking about work, talking about the money house projects, it becomes very transactional. And so couples are struggling. They want that emotional intimacy. They, they, they know that that's something, there's something more we can have than what we have now. We just don't know how to get to there. And so mm -hmm. oh, I think that obviously you've heard the advice, date your wife, date your husband, right? Keep dating, don't stop dating. Um, that tool is helping couples, like especially our 365 Connecting Questions for, for Couples book, is helping couples engage in the conversation. And frankly, even though we wrote the book, we bring it along every date night because, you know, at a certain point, we're like, hey, let's engage in a conversation. And you know what? You can't blame the, you, you can't blame it on the question. You know, if it brings up a fight, <laughs> It's probably unearthing conflict that's there, but you know what? Blame it on the question, right? Yeah. So we, we typically ask the same things. How was work? How are the kids? You know, what's for dinner? Did you pick up the dry cleaning? And so a couple sample questions would be something like, what is a goal you want us to set in, by the end of this year? 
Um, what is a way your parents expressed their love to you growing up? What did your parents teach you about money? Oh my gosh. Right? That's that's a five hour conversation for Casey and I. What are things that we can say no to that, that we're committed to to say yes to our marriage? And these questions, like you said, babe, we're so good at them when we're dating. And we just it's not intentional. We just ask the same questions over and over again. So it it allows someone who's really tired from work or if you've been with the kids all day to just open the book and just ask a question and take turns answering it. And sometimes the questions are, you know, three minutes and sometimes it'll bring hours of conversation and your answers will change. And it's so great to hear couples feedback to say, I didn't even realize this was going on in my spouse's world. And by one asking one simple question, brought up so much other things in our marriage. But it's also, I think it's a gift to your marriage because what that is, it's giving your marriage quality time together. Mm. You're saying, we're going to stop the noise around us. We're going to turn off the TV. We're going to silence our phones. And we're just going to connect. And whether you ask the question on a walk around your block or over the phone, it doesn't even have to be in person, but it's still that emotional intimacy, which we know is the glue in marriage. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. That hence the the name of our podcast, Stronger Marriage Connection. It's not just stronger marriage, but that's that connection. It's that emotional, that physical com- connection, that intimacy that the couples need. And even that idea of connecting first before communicating. Oh yeah, yes, absolutely. It, it, that's that's true, Liz. Um, I, okay, I got to ask you this one as well. I got I got to jump in and ask this. Tell us about the sixty second blessing. Are, are you willing to give us kind of a, a little demonstration uh, of how we can do that in our marriage? Oh, yeah, we will totally demonstrate well, it. Words have a very powerful force. If you think about it, I, I, I think sometimes we underestimate how powerful the words we speak over each other are in our relationships, right? Um, an ancient Jewish proverb says that words either give life or they take away life and that you get to choose. And I think if we're, we're not intentional, we're not checking in. We can just, you, we, we, our words are cheap. The 60 second blessing is a focused time where you would turn to your partner and for 60 seconds, you shower them with words of love, of affirmation, how proud you are of them, the qualities that you appreciate about them, that you see in them. And it's almost actually a, a beautiful way to speak into Even the insecurities that you may have, your spouse may have to say, that's not true. You're actually a really amazing dad. You you are a hard worker. You're a very creative person, right? And then what happens is once that is done, then the other partner would give the other person 60 seconds of showering them with their affirmation. It's really powerful. It's a two-minute daily habit. I think the goal would be that couples would try to commit to this, to do it every day for seven days. We say, try it for seven days Mm -hmm. and see and evaluate how are we feeling? Are we feeling more connected? Do we have a stronger marriage? Do I feel more loved? Do uh, Wow, you pointed out something that I didn't even know you recognized about me, that that you appreciate. But if we don't give our marriage that time, it's almost like we just assume our spouse knows these things. And so this is actually something that we learned when we we did a marriage intensive when we were really bad. And they taught kind of a version of it, but it was like longer. We were like, what could be shorter? Because we had really littles at that time. Our kids were really, really young. I think, I think when we did the intensive, I think our son was maybe like five months old. I'm like, I don't have much time. I'm living off no sleep. What could I do? And Casey goes, what if we did the 60 second blessing? And I don't know, that just stuck. And we're like, I love that. Yeah. And now tens of thousands of couples all around the world are doing it. And we love to hear those stories. Yeah. When we do retreats and we do the 60 second blessing, never a dry eye in the audience there because people have not installed that discipline and they're hearing those words for the first time, maybe in months, sometimes years, sometimes decades. We have, yeah, we have. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's it's powerful. It is very powerful. And then we tell people that have children to model the sixty second blessing actually in front of your kids, because the kids now get to see their their parents yes. speaking words of life and love and appreciation. But then to take it another level is to do the sixty second blessing to your children, mm. because I know for me, and, and you know, I've got a, we've got a teenage daughter, and the world is telling her she is not enough. She does not look right. She does not do this right. 
And so to be able to sit there and speak the 60 second blessing to her too. And oh my our, God. Both of our kids. I mean, imagine if your mom came in and spoke 60 second blessing over you. What emotional state would you be in? I may have a heart attack. I don't know. <laughs> I, it would be, I, I, it'd be life shattered. I don't even know actually. So, so we're yeah. to adult parents of adults. You can still do the 60 second blessing to your kids and still make their day. Isn't that touching, Dave? Uh, uh, I love that. I wanted to brag about uh, Casey and Megan. Also, Dave, they made an extra TV appearance. You know the show Extra TV, right? Yeah. Extra, extra. <laughs> and they were on there talking about yeah. Hollywood marriage, talking about out-of-the-spotlight marriages. And one thing I didn't know in that segment, Casey and Megan, was about Patrick Dempsey and his wife. Like in 2015, uh, she had filed for divorce, I believe. And a year later, they announced that they're going to work on their marriage. I mean, that's, again, just another vote of confidence when he came out and said, you know, our marriage was not something I was prepared to let go of. I didn't feel like we'd done all the work. My wife didn't feel like we'd done all the work and we wanted to. And that's where we started. I thought that was so encouraging for the rest of us. Yeah. You know, I'm proud of Patrick for, for making a stand and choosing not to live a life of regret and saying, you know what, maybe we are better together. We're stronger together. And let's work it out. I wish he was a, a Marriage 365 member. I wish there was actually a lot of public figures that were members because I, I think there's a lot of distraction when you come into the spotlight. And, you know, it's not akin to just the normal everyday couple as well, because there's a lot of distractions that all of us deal with, right? I just think that for celebrities and for people in the public figure, it's just more intense, mm -hmm. but it's still a distraction. Uh, work can still be a distraction. Making the kids a priority can still be a distraction. The, the commitments to, uh, to uh, what families, extended families can be a distraction. In fact, social media, entertainment, there's a lot of things that people can prioritize over their spouse. But, you know, the, the winners in, in the public eye and in the private eye, too, are those that, that make a decision and say, hey, I, I don't want to live a life of regret. I don't, I don't want to settle for just having an average marriage. I want to have a stronger marriage. I want to have something. And I'm going to figure out how do I get the tools and resources in my pocket um, that are going to give me those like the action steps. I'm going to, I'm going to figure out what's a realistic plan for us to invest in a relationship invest in myself and my emotional health and, and that I can become a, the best version of myself. So when I show up, I'm not a hot mess anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And, and you have so many tools, so many like practical that. things that you're, you're sharing with couples. You have the 60 second blessing. Tell us a little bit about the, the monthly check-in, right? You talk about 30 minutes of setting aside some time. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so we actually have a, an individual monthly check-in and then we have a couple's monthly check-in mm. because of course, kind of what we stand at Marriage 365 like we've chatted about is if you wanna make a better marriage, make a better you. But for the couple's check-in, this is really asking um, questions, kind of those open-ended questions we're talking about where there's a time of reflection. It's looking at mm. this last 30 days and saying, what did we do right? Where could we improve? Um, really taking that 30 minutes once a month, putting it on your calendar to say, let's just make sure we didn't just kind of skip through this last month and just kind of, you know, wing it to really go, is there something we need to change? Or, because I love this with marriage, I don't think we celebrate enough. I don't think we celebrate our wins enough. And this is giving you an opportunity to do that as well to say, mm -hmm. can't, wow, that was a really great date night we did. Or wow, we listened to the Stronger Marriage podcast and we learned so much from them. You should be celebrating that. Then the next 15 minutes of the meeting is to look at the next month and to plan. Mm -hmm. Because I think that the number one issue we're seeing with couples is not a lack of desire. They want a healthy marriage. They're, they're not planning. Mm -hmm. They're not scheduling. They're not evaluating and processing and taking the time to go, what do we need to do and implement in our lives in order to have a better marriage? And so now it's looking forward in the next 30 days and really actually coming up with a plan. Okay, what are three practical things that we're going to do this next month to make sure that we're spending time together? That's an example. What are we going to do to make sure that our sex life doesn't, you know, go on the back burner, right? What do we need to say no to so that we can say yes to each other? Is there anything I need to apologize for? 
I think a lot of couples, right? Especially, I love my husband, but you know, he's an avoider. If I don't ask, sometimes he'll never bring up an issue. So it's my opportunity to say, hey, have I done anything? Have I said anything? And that's usually when he feels kind of like he has the freedom to be like, okay, I haven't said anything, but you know, you made this comment and it hurt. So that's what I love about the couples monthly check-in. And then once you do that, if you, if you want to even take it a step further and you're kind of on this self-discovery pathway, definitely check out the individual monthly check-in because now you get to evaluate yourself (laughs) and be really honest about how you're doing the good and the bad and the ugly. Same thing. Yeah. Love it. We'll be right back after this brief message. And we're back. Well, let's dive right in. You have, you have a pulse on a lot of couples in the around the globe, Casey and Megan. Tell us a bit about what COVID has done, the damage it's done to us as marriages, in our marriages and our families. What do you see and what do you recommend? Do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about it, or do you want me? We have a lot to say about this topic. I. It's very interesting season we've gone through. Um, I think there was a lot of unknowns at the beginning, and then. What we noticed most was the level of anxiety that it created with a lot of couples. And anxiety is a fear. Whether it's, it's valid or invalid, I think that there's a lot to have been said about if you were tied to the news 24-7, statistics show your anxiety levels were elevated, no doubt about it. And what we heard from couples was the realization that when they were forced to be together for extended amounts of time, either they had a strong structure of emotional intimacy and safety and vulnerability that they could withstand an outside pressure, or they were just in a house of cards. And as soon as COVID lockdowns happened, it exposed them that we have neglected our relationship. So what had happened was, a lot of couples kind of hunkered down. They said, you know what, team Kasten, we got this. We're going we're to we're do this together. But then a lot of couples realized, wow, we have been going way too long without checking in with each other. We have not invested in emotional intimacy. And I don't feel safe with you because you have not been there for me. <laughs> I'm an avoider, so I know what this feels like. You've avoided the issues in a relationship. I've been the only one that's had to carry the relationship. And and then and there's some questions about tolerance of like, oh, now how long am I going to tolerate if I ask you to join me in the marriage and you're looking at me and saying, I'm, I'm just going to do my thing still? Uh, we have a lot of questions about healthy separation. A lot of separation. Because... Conversing with their spouse did not get them engaged. So we had conversations about, well, how do you separate in a healthy way? Not separation to divorce, right. but actually separation to disrupt that person's life enough where they go, oh my gosh, like I may lose something that's really, really important to me. Or at least I say that verbally. And now when they're actually physically gone, now I'm feeling emotional distance and pain. Mm. Yeah. And then just lots of fights about, you know, all the, all the stuff, the vaccines, the masks. Um, yep. There are many couples that, you know, they were afraid to have sex because they were afraid to get sick. You know, and I, I always say like, can you imagine if you told everybody 10 years ago, you and your spouse would be fighting over masks, you'd go, you're crazy. <laughs> um, but that was a real thing. And there, you know, there's, I think when we, we all work with couples, we all want to see them succeed. The thing is, is at the end of the day, there isn't always a right and wrong. Um, it's always seeing two perspectives and teaching couples how to move forward through that. Because mm-hmm. Casey and I are actually very different politically, but we still can talk about it and respect each other. Mm-hmm. And that's the goal, right? Like it's okay to have different views on these things because COVID again exposed so many fears and anxiety. And it was like, you don't let a mask break you up. You know, like mm-hmm. you're bigger than this. You're better than this. You can overcome this. And And I love Liz, you know, something that you always say is your job is to give hope. That's a really great marriage and family therapist, because if you leave the session, not feeling hopeful, Mm -hmm. you know, that that's the, the, they want you to succeed in life. And and part Mm -hmm. of that is hope, hope that there is better in the future because when you're stuck and you're lonely and we were all stuck at home, all of us had some hope 
that was taken from us. And how do you give that back to couples? We feel like we're Casey's nickname is the Tony Robbins for marriage. You know, he's, <laughs> he's out there and he's like, you got this. Well, I think it was really painful to watch the division that was happening collectively as a, our country was divided as COVID lockdowns. Then we had racial tensions and there was divisions there. Then we were divided about the election. Then we were divided about vaccines. And, and that happened not only collectively as a culture, but that started happening in the home Yeah, where there was people were looking at each other and you're like, you don't believe in masks. I'm out of here. And we're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, this is not the issue to split a family and leave mm-hmm. collateral damage with kids Yes, as, as, an ex, as a way to divide. And so I think, guys, we're on a mission to unify. We're, well, and you know what? It's going to start in the family unit. It's going to start by maturing up relationships. So I would like to say we're on a mission. We want to be as fast as we can to reach a million families and increase their marital satisfaction by giving them practical tools, action plans, not just advice, but actually like, here's what you need to do to build a healthy relationship. And we're going to do that with our membership, with our, with our courses and videos, but we're actually going to be tracking the data because we have a marriage 365 checkup. So we ask questions, not how are we doing? It's actually how do I show up in the relationship? And then we will be able to track that the next month after watching content and getting those plans and enacting them. Where did your marriage score go? So each each member would have uh, eyes on that. But then collectively, we're going to be able to monitor that data to say, hey, as we start seeing people engage in this, are we able to elevate the marriage health score of our nation or of a million families? And that to me is where that's the mission that I'm so excited about. It gets me up in the morning. It charges me up. It gets me very excited because mm-hmm. to think that the couple that is the least likely to succeed, the couple that was horrible <laughs> at, at marriage. I, in fact, I sometimes joke. I said, my job is now to stand up on a national stage and say, here's how crappy of a husband I was. <laughs> it's pretty vulnerable. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> Sometimes he goes, "Wait, you really a little too me, naked? You really want me to say that?" I said, "I think oh, I you need to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would really open the doors for more people to be vulnerable." But if we if we could impact our generation, I'm thinking about the long. I'm already thinking twenty years down the line of these these couples raising kids. They're being affirmed. They're confident. They're watching healthy relationships. Then those kids do not have to go through the nightmare situation of what I had experienced as a child with, with dads coming in and out, blended families, and nightmares that came with that, the insecurities, the abandonment wounds. I want no child to ever have to experience that. And I know that if I can, if that's my end target, we got to back up and start saying, hey, how do we start maturing these relationships? Yeah, it's, it's powerful. Yeah. You're impressive. And, of course, your new app, Marriage, Marriage 365 app, is going to help you do just that. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so like Casey mentioned, uh, the main thing we do at Marriage 365 is we have an online streaming service. That's our membership. And we heard from our members and they said, can you make an app? Because that would make it even easier to use membership. And so we recently launched an app. It's been amazing to see. We have already over 100 five-star reviews. It's not even been a month out. Um, and it just makes working on your marriage even that much simpler. I mean, I'm, I'm a mom of two kiddos. I'm in the pickup line. I drop them off at practice. You can just sit there for five minutes and do something for your marriage. Because I think at the end of the day, doing something is better than doing nothing. And I think that that's, we're trying to make mm-hmm. it so easy for people to work on their marriage to where it's not too complicated. It's not over their head. You don't have to have, you know, a degree in psychology that anybody that wants a healthy marriage can have a healthy marriage, but it starts by making a healthy you because Casey and I, the reason why our marriage is successful is because we're two healthy individuals. Mm-hmm. Two healthy individuals make a healthy marriage. And that doesn't mean that if you're listening and someone's like, oh, great, like I'm I'm so unhealthy or my my spouse is. 
That's why we love to share a story because we've truly lived it that, and I think that's the hope, but I think also there is so much freedom and peace. And if you've been feeling that anxiety and that stress and you're done with it, once you start taking the focus off your spouse and just focus on you and how you're showing up, it just makes life so much more enjoyable. Hmm. And there is hope. Any, anything for singles? What about singles? Anything for them? Oh, I mean, how much time do you have? Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, right. we, we, I, I love working with someone who's single. And you know why? The fact that they're listening, they're already leap years ahead of everybody oh, else. Yes. Mm. They're doing something right. So if they're single listening, I, I can't even, I just, I'm so proud of anyone who is a part of Marriage 365, who's a part of the Stronger Marriage like Connection, anything like that. Because what you're saying is one day, if that happens for me, I want to be equipped. Mm. And I think make sure you're dating someone that you have shared values. That is our number one advice. Because you can be different personalities. You, you can have different hobbies. You can have all those things. Typically opposites attract, right? I mean, Casey and I are very opposite in many ways. But I think that at the end of the day, you need to have your core values lined up. If you value honesty and vulnerability, you should try to marry someone and be with someone mm-hmm. who is honest and vulnerable. You don't want to be with someone who's not those things, who doesn't value or appreciate that because that will come out on the other side of marriage. Um, date and have fun. Dating should be fun. Not, you know, it's not rainbows and butterflies every day, but it should be fun. If it's really hard and yucky and complicated right away, then you're probably not with the right person. You know, the tools and resources we've created are, I think Megan had mentioned this earlier, are really for any relationship that you have. For example, we teach the four-step proper apology. That's something that should be employed in the workforce. That's something that should be employed with friends. If you Hurt your friends mm-hmm. to be able to do a proper apology. Learning to walk in forgiveness. Learning how to set healthy boundaries. I mean, I would say Marriage 365 has a ton of dating resources mm-hmm. in creating a confident person. Megan's got a courageous confidence course to help understand, like, how do I get more of that <laughs> good-looking swagger that's attractive to other people? Um, and I, I will say that, you know, on the bucket list for uh, this upcoming year is to create dating resources. So we have and d- dating resources and divorce care because we want to do full cycle relationship care um, because those, there are different um, seasons. But I will say this. If someone the, one of the reasons why we do have unhealthy marriages is because we don't date well. Hmm. We don't ask the hard questions. We focus way too much on love and sex. A hundred percent. Like we don't set ourselves up with the right expectations for what marriage really is. And so because of that, we choose the wrong partner or we have the wrong mindset. And then we get into marriage. We're frustrated because, you know, we're trying to stick a square peg into a round hole. Mm. And so we definitely see that if we can improve the dating, like if we can date up, then we're going to see healthier marriages. Okay. I have one more thing to say. Yeah. Okay, I, we should do a whole podcast just for singles because yes. I have so much to say. Um, Liz, as a marriage and family therapist, I'm sure you would agree, but we ended up asking 30, we have a lot of friends who are in the same you know, realm as us. And I asked them, what is your, mo- your best advice for someone who's single? And about 25 of them said the same thing. If you want to, you want to be teachable, And you want to have a spirit of learning and growing. And if you're always someone who's like, you know what? I don't know about that, but I'm going to learn and I'm going to teach that. And when you start to date, you also want to be with someone who's the same way. So if someone you're starting to date goes, oh, I don't do therapy. Oh, that's a red flag. We say, no, stay away. Because then if you're going to get married and you're going to have problems, guess what they're going to say? Oh, I'm not going to therapy. So if you are, if you are learning and growing and you're someone who's teachable, Oh, you again, you're, you're listening to this podcast. You probably already are that person. You're, you're doing so well in life already. Keep going. Never stop. I think that we, we do put too much of an emphasis on love and sex. And so when those things are rattled or they don't, they don't go the way we thought they would, then what is the foundation the couple has? That, that's the problem that we're seeing a lot. And we can do lots more about that. <laughs> so I'll stop now. <laughs> 
The only thing I would add is that find someone who is willing to tell the truth about themselves, right? Mm-hmm. Putting, putting that worst foot forward instead of the best foot forward. Can you tell the truth about yourself and find someone who will also tell you about the downsides of them, right? Here are my warts and my weaknesses. Show me yours, I'll show you mine. So I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And marriage will... And- and because then there will be people who are listening to this. No, well, no, and marriage will expose those those warts and those worst things. And the the the, the um, we we like to call them growth areas. You know, marriage will expose that so quickly. So if you think you can hide them, you can for a bit. But once you get married, you can't hide anything. You can't fool your spouse. We always say you can't fool your spouse. You can't hide anything from them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man. No. I get away with nothing. That is so true. <laughs> yes. And so, and let me just last question, the individual who's divorced or might be discouraged, what advice do you have for that person who might just be thinking marriage is just not cut out for me? No one wants to live a life with regret. And I would say, you know what? You owe it to yourself to start working on bettering yourself because Megan had all rights to walk away and say, I'm done and I'm walking out. I, was a, I wasn't participating. I was a stick in the mud. But she gave me the hope and inspiration to work on myself by going on her own journey. Now, had I, I wish it was me. It's not. It was Megan who made that courageous decision. And so somebody who's sitting there on the fence and going, you know what, this is, this is hopeless. You know what? You need to give yourself time to work on yourself, to work on your insecurities, to gain more self-awareness, spousal awareness, so that you can start building that confidence in yourself. Confidence is all about trusting yourself. And if we have toxic scriptings like, I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not worthy enough, then we are not going to trust ourselves because of that scripting. So when you grow in confidence, then you start setting these healthy boundaries and you can kind of start to, you, you know, boundaries are like fences, right? We, we protect what's good and we protect from the outside, the negativity coming in. They hit that boundary wall and what you that person that's coming up against that boundary wall is going to realize, wow, like I can't just treat this person the way I used to anymore. And that right there, when I saw that in Megan, I saw who she became. It was something very aspirational and inspirational. It gave me hope and it gave me the courage to embark on my own journey. I I would tell that person who's divorced, I would say, be sure to heal. You know, it's trauma. Divorce is trauma. Don't minimize it. Don't make excuses. Don't feel bad that you're still angry or sad or confused. Um, the best thing you could do is to go see a therapist and talk with a safe friend. Stay single for a little bit. Really evaluate. Did I miss the warning signs? Did, did I show up well? What could I do to improve? Forgive yourself. You know, because I think a lot of people who get divorced never really forgive themselves. Mm-hmm. And then they move into another relationship eventually. And they carry that baggage, that unforgiveness with them. and. And I think that 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 is something I would say, I don't think enough divorcees go through the healing process. And if you're like, I don't know where to start, that's why a therapist would walk you through that. And there is hope and you can heal. And there are a lot of people who are divorced who are not still resentful towards their ex and they don't want them to die. And they can actually see them and and hope for good things for them because that's forgiveness. And so forgive yourself, forgive your, Mm -hmm. your ex. And then on top of it, of course, just go through the healing journey. It's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Wow. <laughs> Megan, Casey, you guys have been um, awesome. It's given us so much good content and places to go and tools. Uh, tell us one more time where listeners can go to find out more information. What's your website? So visit marriage365.com. You can find us also on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Um, but our main website has a ton of content and that's actually how if you go to marriage365.com you can learn more about our membership awesome fantastic okay we like to wrap up every episode with a takeaway of the day um so let me ask each each of you just you know 30 seconds or so what is your wrapped up little takeaway of the day that you can uh, give listeners 
This is typically us. Who wants to go first? Because <laughs> we usually want to go first. So I try to be really polite and say, babe, would you like to go first? Uh, yeah, but our competitive nature is like, should we just go at the same time? <laughs> Except for in the bedroom, I always go first. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. I had to throw that in there. Come yeah. on. You're vulnerable. That's great. Okay, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go first. Um, I would say my takeaway is even though, you know, I'm in a healthier place than I ever have been, um, I think that it's even a good reminder for me as a marriage expert that there is always things that I need to work on and improve on. Mm. And that doesn't mean that I'm looking for, for perfection. I'm a recovering perfectionist, but it's a reminder that progress and even a little bit of progress is better than nothing. And I, I really believe with my whole heart that if, if every single person listening said, what is one thing I'm going to do today or this week where I can progress? I think that there would be happier people walking around. I think there'd be people full of more confidence and joy because, again, the focus is on themselves and things that they can control. Yeah. You can't control anybody else. Yeah. Ah, I hate that. <laughs> I wish I could. That would be my takeaway. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. So asking, like looking forward in the future. How can I progress? Okay, so I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going oh. to look in the rear view mirror. And I'm going to use the word reflection. Um, as a company, we're in a season of reflection of what we've accomplished in the past seven years. And even looking into the future, how our business is changing. So collectively, we're in a season of reflection. Um I'm part of a, a business owners group and we spend once a month, we spend time in reflection. And I think just asking this question, how's it working out for you? Mm -hmm. I think that that's a question a lot mm -hmm. of us avoid because we're afraid of the answer. If we really take a moment and take inventory, how's it working out? And it's not working out. Then guess what I have to do? Change. Change. Mm -hmm. I have to do something. So that's a, a an avoider. If you're an avoider listening to this, be brave, feel the fear, face that, answer that question. But how's this working out? Mm -hmm. Are we connecting? Do I feel my like love tanks filled up? Do I feel like we're I'm showing up as a spouse in a healthy way? Because if you are not, that means you have to do something about it. And so, reflection. Yeah, man, that's great. Uh, that's awesome. Liz, tell us yeah. your takeaway of the day. Uh, well, you know, I, I love that whole thing, Casey, you kind of took the words right out of my mouth. But just that when we're stuck in a demise of marriage, when we're stuck in gridlock, it just takes one of us to say, okay, what about me? Looking at the person in the mirror saying, I got to get this together. I can go to therapy. I can learn about me. How do I make this work worse? How do I make it better? It just change, It takes one person to change the dance in marriage. So... Beautifully done, Casey and Megan. Dave, and your takeaway? Yeah, there, there's been so much. I, I loved the idea, and you mentioned it, Casey and Megan, about this intentionality, this this mindful self-awareness, this intentionality, this planning ahead of time. I love the, the date night. I'm a huge fan of date night, not talking about kids, money, or work, and then putting away your, your phone for the entire date, just focusing on, on each other. So I, I love that, making time to connect uh, just one-on-one -on -one because research shows it's only about 44 minutes it is about all that we get as far as one-on-one -on -one time other research shows it's even shorter than that so making the most of that planning ahead to uh, intentionally connect with each other so wow uh, again thanks so much uh, Casey Megan for joining us here on Stronger Marriage Connection podcast so much so many tips and tools and things that you shared with us. So we're grateful to, to have you on. So thanks for joining us today. It was so much fun. We got to do this again. Let's do it again. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's actually do one on, on, on singles. I love the kind of the thought process and so much that we could do for, for those who are, are singles, even those who are divorced, kind of on that, that whole lifespan. So I, I love that thought. So yeah, we'll bring you back again and, and let's do that. So but I always, I always say thank you, Dave and Liz, for being on a mission to help other families strengthen their relationship giving them tools and resources. So appreciate you guys. Our honor and thank you to Yeah. Hey, before we let you guys go, tell us one more time, where can people go to learn more about you guys? 
You guys can visit us at marriage365.com where you can learn more about membership. Um, you can download our mobile app on the Apple Store or Google Play Store. Uh, you can find us also on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. Awesome, man. Well, thanks again, you guys. And uh, for our listeners, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, do us a favor and take a few minutes to subscribe to our podcast and the Utah Marriage Commission YouTube channel, where you can watch this and every episode of the show. When you hit the like button and leave a comment, your feedback helps us improve the show. And don't forget to share this episode with a friend. You can also follow and connect with us on Instagram at Stronger Marriage Life and on Facebook at Stronger Marriage. Be sure to share with us what topics you want us to explore or what you loved about today's episode. If you want even more resources to improve your relationship connection, visit our website at strongermarriage.org where you'll find free workshops, webinars, relationship surveys, and more. Each episode of Stronger Marriage Connection is hosted and sponsored by the Utah Marriage Commission at Utah State University. Finally, a big thanks to our producers, Rex Polanis, Kirsten Wilson, and the team at Utah State University, and you, our audience. You make this show possible.